The Soxhoatl tribe has very little resources. We're out here in the North Cascades. We're still in COVID, but we have no casino. Tribes of the Skagit Valley, including the tiny Soxhoatl, are rural, poor, and struggling to compete with the deep pockets of a big city utility doing business in their backyard. We aren't the richest tribe by any means, but I think even though we are so small, we're mighty in nature enough so to stand up to a big bully in the playground. For nearly a century, Seattle City Light has operated three hydroelectric dams on the Skagit River, a project the tribes say damages their salmon and culture. The river has been at the center of their lives since time immemorial. Now in a federal dam relicensing process, the tribes say the system is stacked against them with Seattle's ability to hire top tier consultants and attorneys to protect the city's interests. The King 5 investigators have found that so far on the preliminary process, Seattle has spent nearly $30 million, the vast majority for science, but also for meeting facilitators, strategic communications, and attorneys. High priced lawyers charging between $500 and $700 an hour. Just to avoid doing the right thing, when they could, they could have taken that and applied it to something equitable, something fair, something that sustains the environment and takes care of the salmon. You know, that's. That's hard to understand. Robert Howard is the general manager of the Sox Suattle tribe. I um, equate it to something for the standpoint of, of bringing in hired guns, you know, um, which I'm sure is their job. But we're a small tribe. Our total tribal budget is a fraction of that. And yet we're standing up. And yet we're trying to do something from our standpoint for the greater good of everybody. Do you feel as though City Light has been good stewards of these taxpayer dollars yes. and what you've spent so far? Um, yes. City Light CEO Deborah Smith says the city is spending what's necessary in a complicated legal process, but she admits the first two years of negotiations, endless Zoom meetings were fraught with conflict and lack of progress, with the utility doing a poor job of listening to stakeholders. Clearly things were not going the way we needed to. Um, were those dollars that were being spent at that time being spent in the most productive way? No. That's why we made the change that we made. And now I feel like we're in a very good place. We're being frugal, we're being careful. Since the dam relicensing began in 2018, the city's been spending and asking for money. In that time, the state of Washington awarded Seattle City Light grants worth nearly $4 million, money to buy conservation land around the river. Critics say that takes away from other projects sponsored by groups strapped for cash. In the time Seattle got $4 million, records show the state didn't fund dozens of other salmon projects, including grants proposed by the Lummi Nation, the Nez Perce Tribe, and the Nisqually Land Trust. So unfortunately, what happens in Seattle doesn't stay in Seattle. It impacts the whole state, costing taxpayers and salmon uh, in projects that don't get done elsewhere. Todd Myers is the Washington Policy Center's environmental director and a member of the Puget Sound Salmon Recovery Council. Other parts of the state, rural areas where salmon recovery and salmon projects are very important, they don't have those deep pockets. So when you take money away from the state that could go to those places, you are really doubly harming um, areas that desperately need that money and where salmon need the habitat. City Light's top boss says the utility does not have unlimited piles of money and won't apologize for accepting state funding she says they're entitled to. I don't feel bad about applying for those types of grants. We don't always get them. Um, there's probably far more instances where we didn't get them and where we've wondered the same thing. Wow, how come we, how come we weren't successful? But when we are, um, I feel like that's a good thing and we'll continue to do so. Seattle plans to spend a lot more to get their dams relicensed, with a total budget of nearly $70 million. <laughs> Tribal members say they're in it for the long haul. That there's no price you can put on the Skagit River and the salmon who call it home. You can spend a billion dollars on this issue and we're still gonna fight as long as it's gonna take to ensure that the world knows about what's happening here to ensure that the local stakeholders and just common folks understand what's right. 
The city did offer the tribes financial assistance to help them participate with the relicensing process, $25,000 a piece. But two of the three tribes turned the money down, saying it wasn't enough to do much of anything with, and it could appear to be a conflict of interest. I'm Susanna Frame reporting live in Seattle.